Hey guys, did you know that there is a Casus Belli that you can in Europe against any other heathen, as long as you're not following your face, that gives you a shitload of money and you can convert him to your religion? Right, we are talking about Riga, Raid the heretic churches. This Casus Belli is really insane. Let's imagine you want to fight against anyone who's not following your belief, you can just do it. For example, here's Cologne, I can just declare against them war against heresy, show superiority, raid churches, or Ansbach. It doesn't matter. Anyone who is in Europe, you can use this Carlos Valley against. Even here down there, Imeriti. It's working. It's an insane Carlos Belly. Let's show it in action, just for a second. My little war is done, and I will show you now the outcome. You just can use against Memmingen, they were partner in the war. I have forced religion, I redirect the churches, I take war reps, and now look at the money. 1074. Boom! 1474. I made 400 money out of nothing. And you know what? I can do this multiple times. Oh, look, the next one. Catholic. Not anymore. Raid heretic churches, war reps. Boom! 500 money. And now the same thing with the last one, right? Peace them out. Force conversion. Raid heretic churches, war reps. And boom! 400 money. How easy can that be? How easy I can make money. And I can declare against anyone inside of Europe for 400 gold, raid heretic churches, and force them to your belief. Easy. Let's not talk only about this Carlos Belly. Let's talk about Riga in general. They have an insane government reform, they have an insane Carlos Belly, they have an insane mission tree, and they can easily become in the first 50 to 60 years a great power. I will show you how that works and to dominate Europe. Please follow me, please subscribe if you like it. We will start now with a guide. Guys, let's talk about Riga. So Riga in general is based in the northeast part of Europe, right next to the Livonian Order and the Teutonic Order. Riga has a challenging position. It is a one province minor. It does not belong currently to the HRE. It is part of a trade league that is led by Lübeck and everyone is strong around us but it's our plan to change that. Let's have a first quick look at the mission tree because the mission tree will basically rail line us to become one of the strongest powers inside Europe and of course become the richest one. Normally the mission tree is split in this is conquering, this is economic. The Riga path is a little bit different. We have here the part on the right side that's only based on your Livonian and Teutonic neighbors. So basically it gives you a subjugation castle spell if you have the maximum on first limit. And if you subjugated them, there are certain little small events that you basically make them your historical friends afterwards. And in the end, you can keep them around and you do not have to spend any kind of diplomatic relationship. Additionally, it gives you one yearly army tradition. This is, this is really insane. Combine it with Basel Force Limit, you will have no problems to keep them in check. Before we talk about the center part of the mission tree, I want to highlight this one. This is called Develop Your City. It basically tells you that you need to have certain kind of buildings, so it's locked behind the technology, but it gives you a crazy amount of buffs. There are already a lot, lot of guides behind it. It's not six provinces, it's five provinces. And the moment when you hit the sixth province, you will lose this government reform and you will basically lose all the kind of bonuses. So in this guide, we will stay below six. We will stay on top with five provinces and I will show you which kind of provinces you will get and where you should focus on. Inside of the mission tree, there is this first mission. We need 15 development and the most important thing is land owned by the cone at least 30% and stability one. That means 
for our government reforms. We cannot hand out so many privileges. The left part, here it is where it gets, gets interesting. It's mostly about diplomatic connections in the beginning, like with Lübeck and the Emperor. And additionally, afterwards, it talks a little bit about how to increase your trade influence inside of Europe. This mission tree here, the first part, you can basically do within the first 10 years. The right part here, it depends a little bit. This one you can do normally in 10 to 15 years, and the last part maybe in 20 to 30 years. One thing to point out is, if you complete these three missions here, your government type will change. I will point it out later more in detail. For Catholic it's something different, and for Protestant it's something else. One of the most crazy things that we, I will put a special bookmark inside of my guide is the cell indulgences. As long as you are Catholic, you can only sell indulgences that give you some money, it gives you some prestige, but nothing else. As soon as you become a reformed religion like Protestant or reformed or orthodox, it changes to raid heretic, heretic churches. One is called blessed plutocracy, the other one is called the salvic plutocracy. So both are really trade related and changes their theocratic nations into a merchant league. Right, you heard right, merchant league. The last part of the mission tree, the bottom part, is really where the fun starts. You will basically break the Hansa and all trade league members will join you. In the same moment when you hit that button, you will automatically hit that button. This one is about changing the religion inside of Europe. A, you can crush the reformation, or B, you can become the leader of the reformation, and afterwards you get an insane permanent buff, the expansionist salary, that basically gives you permanent 10% moral bonus. This one, in the moment when you form the trade league, you will have that bonus immediately hits the same time. Uh, this one is a little bit special. You basically need to subsidize four great powers, but it won't be a problem. In the 15th century, you will have a roughly 50 to 60 ducats income. You give everyone 10 ducats, boom, mission done within one day. The last part of the mission tree normally takes under 1520 because you need to hire a lot of mercenaries. And mercenaries are not available for five provinces minors all the time, so this one will take a little bit longer. But as soon as you have it, you will get an afterwards an insane another mission where you basically just subsidize a country with 20% of the income and get some kind of mana admin and tip points. But it's not a problem at all. You will swim in these kind of points because you will have the best advisors that you can have. Let's have a very, very quick look at our ideas. Vegan ideas are somehow balanced between economic, trade and military. And that is really good because we need it. Our first thing is we get development cost reduction 10%. That's really amazing. We will need it and use it all the time. And I can tell you, we can buff that up until 20, 25 and 30% without, without struggling. Manpower recovery, very important. We get some papal influence, we get trade bonuses as mentioned, we get some conversion strength, we get dip rep, we need that to keep our lead in, league in check, and of course, discipline at the end. First thing, what we will do is, we go to the clergy, we give out religious diplomats. Additionally, we go to the nobility and we give out increased levies. We summon the diet, Pick any kind of mission that you want. I will go for the burgers, develop a little bit the Riga, because you need to do it anyhow, and we seize land. That's it. That's our first step. Done. We will give not anything to the burgers. If you give something out, you will go above 50% crown land influence, and you cannot push it down until 1454, because that is the moment when we hit 30% crown land. Now we spoke about the government reforms. Next step. Send our ships, protecting trade, into the Baltic Sea. We will take our galleys and hunt pirates in the Baltic Sea to protect our coastline. Because Goatland sometimes changes into a pirate republic. And pirate republic raid your coast. 
with protecting trade or hunt pirates, you could prevent that. Normally the first tick it will not happen, but for the next tick in 10 years it will happen. What do we do with our diplomats? Because we need to fulfill the missions, right? Connect with the Hansa. So first, first uh, diplomat goes to Lübeck, improve relation. Second one, we will check out who is rival to Austria. So it's Savoy. Savoy, we send an insult, gone for insult, check, boom, done. And now that basically we have our first mission tree, first step done. An event within the Holy Roman Empire, boom, and now we are part of the HIE. Congratulations, nobody can attack us anymore. Next thing, we still have money left, so we go to the Pope, to Korea, we will spend money, sell indulgences to get faster papal influence gain. Next thing, we need to look for allies around us. So I really strongly recommend Bohemia, additionally Brandenburg and afterwards Lübeck. These three will help you in your next war. Talking about wars, we need to build up our troops. We kill the cavalry, we don't need it and we build up to force limit. Just infantry, that's it. We lower army maintenance, we deactivate our fort, and as soon as we have money, we will build some galleys. As soon as our diplomat is back, we will try to ally Brandenburg. This event pops up on the first day after the game starts. You can do many things. I would suggest you, you go for the paper protégé, or let the fate decide what will become the heir. Sometimes a merchant son is valuable too, because it gives you burgers influence and can spawn something like an event, say you get 1% one mercantil, one mercantilism and we need that. But for now we go for the Papal Protégé. Ah, 252, that's okay. And he's called Johan. Don't forget, improve relations with Hamburg, so that he will ally us too. And rivals. For now, you only have the Livonian order. Right now, the income is really, really shitty. You know why? Because Lübeck, we are part of the trade league, is sucking off your income. So we will leave the trade league. Leaving the trade league will give you more trade power in the Baltic and in Lübeck and everyone else. And that boosts up your income immediately to one ducat. And at the same time, because Lübeck is not sucking away your trade income, we can complete the next mission. We get one ducats because we are the strongest trade power of the Baltics, as it should be. Done. One ducats for nothing. Next thing is, we are allied to Brandenburg. We will now carry favors with them because we need ten. We need to, we will call them into a war, and additionally. We improve relations with Bohemia until the allies. There's one more mission that we can almost immediately complete. is a trade presence in Lübeck. For that, you just, if you have 200 dip rep, just promote mercantilism until you have it. And then you can immediately fire the next mission. In my case, I was lucky because I just had an event with 25. But it's 1446. You should have 200 um, dip mana right now, though you can complete it immediately. And now we get additionally three mercantilism and we get a very, very cheap trader. He's so cheap, it's crazy. What we will do now is additionally we focus on military because we need mill points. If you have, you can and you can afford it, hire one of these guys. But just wait a little bit, latest in 1450, we can afford him. Nothing will happen now. We will just wait until we have, until 1449, when we will seize Kronland again. We will step up one more time and then we will just play from there. Okay guys, a few years have passed. We have a lot of favors now with Bohemia, 11. We have the same amount of favors with Brandenburg. And Lübeck has 16 favors with us now too. So we would be ready to attack the Livonian order. What you need to do is, you need just to build up until force limit. And when you are force limit, you can click that mission. 
and this mission gives you basically 10% morale and additionally it gives you a subjugation card of spelly against the Teutonic Order and it gives you a card of spelly subjugation against the Livonian Order. What do you need to know? Sometimes Really, really sometimes it happens that the Livonians are somehow allying Muscovy, Lithuania, Poland or even Denmark. If that is the case, just restart the game. It's not worth to wait so much, so much time until the breaker alliance or anything happens. So our first war will be against the Livonian order. We will not, in my case, we will not call in the Teutons as a co-belligerent. Because look, they are allied to Muscovy and Denmark. This is basically a really, really messy situation. What we will do is, we will go above fourth limit with our troops and hopefully our allies will able to conquer Teutonic Order. We will peace them out, we will uh, cancel the alliances with Moscovy, we will keep the alliance with Denmark to prevent Poland attacking them and in the next war we attack the Teutons again this Denmark inside because sometimes it happens that Muscovy attacks the Danish and so they cannot be called in. But before we do that, I promised you we need to complete one mission. This mission is the city against the state. For that, you need to develop it until 15 as I have here. We need to be Kronland 30% as I have here. Burgers need to be low 50, very important. Sometimes there are events that raise so our burgers influence don't take it because it will ruin your game and you cannot you need to wait until the burgers influence is going down so what i will do now i will just step up and click that lovely mission that gives me local development cost production efficient tax manpower devotion and a dozen more devotion who needs that well now diving up riga gets really cheap and additionally we get a lovely cathedral and we need that because for the paper imagery it tells you that we need to have a church or a cathedral in your city. And we have that now. That mission done, it's finally part for estates 2.0. Now we finally can do our magic here. He gets a rich estate, cleric advisory council, nothing else yet. For the nobility, we get the military power. And additionally, the Arcatic Councillors and Supremacy over the Bishopric. And for the Burgers, we take the Land of Commerce, Patronage of the Arts, Commercial Advisory Board, and we take Indebted to the Burgers. This is the only time in the game when you need to take it because we need to prep for war now. What does it mean, prepping for war? We are already at force limit of 7. Additionally, we hire the free company and even then we build up one more soldier. Because the Teutons and the Livonians are stronger than us combined and normally it's like that, that these guys come to you and crush you at your city. Sometimes if you are uh, very much advanced in technology and manpower, maybe they do not dare to attack us. Next thing what we will do is, we will hire one of these guys for that we need to take another loan. Believe me, your money will go and think like crazy right now. Because we are five above force limit, we have a lot of advisors. You will need to you will need to pay a loan every month. In the end of the war, you maybe maybe have 30 loans. It doesn't matter because it's only about winning. And the guy who wins is the one who endures. And we are eager, we endure. Additionally, don't forget to make this one defense elect and because we need to hold out. One side note, maybe you have realized that we have now monthly autonomy plus 0.4. It doesn't matter because we are on a single state and it's your capital. It cannot go above zero because every time when something is rising autonomy like it's written here, it will not change because it's your capital and your capital is always zero percent. Your first government reform will come around in 1450. We normally would take the merchant and later we will change to the merchant. For now, you will take mission on the high seas because we need more force limit for later missions for the, sh for the ships. On a side note, 
I told you in the beginning, there's a mission that we only need to have five provinces. And I think now is the perfect moment and time when I tell you which five provinces that are. It will be number one, Riga. It will be number two, Gotland. It will be number three, Danzig. It will be number four, Zealand, Sierland. And number five, it will be Krakow. These five provinces have one thing in common. They are strong trade hubs. Zealand additionally has a lovely monument that basically gives you navy tradition for protecting trade and you will have a lot of trade fleets around. Gotland gives you domestic trade power and triple time, very important. And Krakow has a close haul. We will get two more merchants on top of our normal merchants. So these three monuments combined are very good. Danzig, on the other hand, is a farmland and it's very cheap to dev up and has gems. If you want to get rid of one of the provinces, maybe consider Danzig at the end of it, if you find something better. But now it's time for the first war. As you can see, there are normally some kind of Catholic zealots around, uh, zealots around in the Livonian order. The Livonians have a mission and they always will have Catholic zealots inside of the country to complete that mission. We will later help them, I will show you how. But let's have our first war against the Livonian order, subjugation Carthus Belly, call in our allies. Lübeck will join, don't worry, after one day they will join immediately, because they have a distance problem. Now it happens, now let's call in the Lübeck. Manpower and troop wise, we are way stronger than them, but we have one problem, they are far away and we are alone here. So. We can hold out at Riga, but mostly they will crush our troops. And the Teutons immediately will come to run to you and try to get uh, kill your troops at Riga. So what I suggest is go down to Letgallen and try to siege down the fort. If that does not work, it's like that. Your troops will be crushed, but your allies will do the job for you. Lucky as I am, my general had two siege pips and he was able to siege down that gun in 141 days. This is amazing. This will be not in your case. What I will do now is, I will try to snipe Danzig. So I will move my troops now to Danzig. Another warning, it could happen. If the Moscovian see that the Teutons are weak and they will not defend Livonian order, the Teutons may jump in and try to crush Livonian order too. If that happens, I'm sorry that it is, restart. It's very sad, but it will be a waste of time and resources. As you can see, because I called in Brandenburg, and Brandenburg already has Dramburg at Neumark, they have a strong interest in the Prussian area too. So they are interested in Danzig, Königsberg too, because they want to form Prussia in the, f in the future. And it's based on the cultural, the cultural part. So. Try to be faster than the Brandenburg guys, or you will be really, really sad that you lost so much time. If you want to have Danzig, you need to be faster than Brandenburg. After a few years, your war could look like that. As you can see, I'm, I'm occupied the Teutons, and Brandenburg, as promised, took, tried to took a lot of provinces. After this war, the Brandenburgian guys will not like me anymore. So what we will do is, with you peace, we only get Danzig, in my case, I need to cancel the alliance with Moscovy. In your case, it could be different. Take all the money, no war rips, because we need to we try to keep the peace deal, the peace time low, because we want to, want to soon attack them again. And now let's finish the war against the Livonians. If you have already won, you can already remove your free company because you will it will suck too much money out of you with force limit because right now it's only basically a walk in the park. Livonians alone won't stand a chance against you. A few months later, the war is done against the Livonians. As mentioned, we do the following. We will subjugate them. Take all the money that we can get. There will be no coalition because nobody, taking, nobody cares what you do with the, with the knights. After we've subjugated them, 
there will be available a new mission. This new mission is basically subjugating the Livonians and helping them to end the Confederacy. As you know, and maybe you have seen already in my guide about Livonian order, the Livonia, they are struggling with a lot of granted privilege estates. So here it's a moment in time where you can help them getting rid of that. Every two years there's an event where you can dissolve a bishopric. It pops up and it tells you, ooh, there is something in Ösel, ten religious, or in something in Reval, please kill them. For now we will just do it. We kill the seven religious regiments in Reval and afterwards they got rid of one of these estates. Two more to go afterwards, the one in Ösel and in Dorpat. Dorpat is here, Ösel will be there. And if you have done that, we will get even more development inside of Riga. So we are really highly interested that we do that. But Livonian Order, on the other hand, is pursuing this goal too, because the AI tries to, tries to help you too. So for now, let's kill these kind of guys. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we have a lot of loans. We will maybe have up to 30 loans. <laughs> and I was pretty accurate. We have 31 loans right now, 217 ducats. It's time to get rid of these. So we, we are now going on a money saving train. Don't forget to improve relations with the Livonian orders. Because the next thing is we try to get the papal embassy. We now will have to improve relations with the Pope. We will get rid of Brandenburg as an ally. And then we can basically sell indulgences. And I will see you then. So improve relations with the Pope for now. And don't forget about the Livonians. One thing to keep in mind, what we are lacking still is Gotland. So with Riga, we can now get claims on Denmark and Gotland. Do that during the peacetime too. In 1467, we need maybe to attack and do an attack of opportunity against Gotland or against Denmark. We will see. When you have caught Danzig, don't forget, edit to the empire because everything will get cheaper like development, building buildings. Don't forget to lower autonomy because we will get a lot of autonomy because we are below on crown land. So don't forget to seize land every five years to get it down to 10%. When you have 100 relation, the thing will happen. Riga will be a, set, a seat of a new cardinal and religion as, as a business will happen. Enable the war against heresy Caris's belly. Before we do that, let me explain you something. If you click that button, we'll change from a bishopric into a blessed plutocracy. So in that moment, if you hit that button, you will be not able to take divine ideas anymore. You will be able to take plutocracy ideas instead. Depends on your game style. What you could do is, you could wait with this mission until you hit admin tag 5, take divine ideas, and then hit the button, become a blessed plutocracy, but you keep the divine ideas. It's really a little bit up to you if you want to have the divine ideas. Divine ideas are actually not bad. They have 5% development cost, they have moral of army, and they have manpower and true faith provinces. And I can tell you what. Manpower is the biggest problem for Riga. You will have maybe a lot of development, but manpower, you will struggle a lot with it. So in the end, it's up to you. With plutocracy on the other side, you will get manpower speed recovery, so your manpower will recover faster. You get the 10% of morale too, and on top of it, you get the development cost. And you get a merchant. It's really up to you a little bit. For the guide, I will switch over to become a blessed plutocracy. And we take plutocracy and not divine ideas. I played around a lot with it and tested it left and right. But I think plutocra plutocracy is more fitting than divine. But as I mentioned, it's up to you. Both ideas, I think, are an equal pair. Boom. Riga will be a seat of a new cardinal religion and the business will power up. 
yes, we want to become a blessed plutocracy because we get additionally one merchant and we get yearly papal influence plus two. This is really crazy. Combine this with our national ID, we get plus four. If you sell indulgences, it's plus five. And if we have enough cardinals, you will basically get 20 influence per year with doing nothing. So until the uh, reformation hits we will farm papal influence and we need to palm it because we need to complete the mission sell indulgences when your new merchant comes in collect trade for now at the baltic so later we will send him over there to to the to lübeck with the blessed plutocracy we are now a merchant republic so that means we have the factions during peacetime, always focus on trade or the guilds. The guilds will make building cheaper and trade makes trade better. And with the aristocrats, you get a moral bonus. So every time when you go to war, just hit the button a few times, gets a 5% moral bonus, better than nothing. On top of that, we get the Merchant Republic possibilities who have OPMs part of our trade league. Right now, there are not so many who would like to join you, but Actually, there are some. There are some center of trades here who will most willingly to join you. It will be Dortmund, it will be Frankfurt, and even Strasbourg are considerable partners for your OPM. But they won't join you because you have no trade power in that area. So what we will do now is we transfer trade power. We just send one of our merchants from Novgorod over there into the Rhineland area. And as you can see, sending this guy over, I can now go to Dortmund and invite them to a trade league. Easy. And... Can we do the same with Strasbourg? Not yet. We need to improve relations a little bit. We will do that. And so we now slowly take away the, the Rhineland trade and we channel the trade into the Lübeck node. And as soon as we are done with getting some OPMs from the Rhineland area, we will collect trade in Lübeck because our lovely OPMs from the Trade League will help us to channel money, funnel money over there. When you build up your trade league, don't forget the Livonian orders is a vassal, and they are part. You are a merchant republic, so you can even get almost all of that trade, because as a merchant republic or blessed plutocracy in our case, all kind of vassals will transfer trade power to you automatically. But with the additionally hitting the button transfer trade power. You will get everything so it's, it's it's really insane you now have 26 trade person trade power and just along the baltics now continue building up your trade league and pro, um, getting claims on the neighborhoods i think it's a good time now to talk about one thing that is totally unique for riga it's about the cell indulgences cell indulgences is a diplomatic option option that allows you to sell fake indulgences to other um, Catholic states and you get, you get money because of that. So, as you can see, the war is over since four years. I've paid all my 30 loans and I have a crazy income of Fallout 9 and I even, even did not hit the magic button. So, what we will do now is we start selling indulgences. Um, I have seen a lot of guides where they click around or use a ledger or whatever, but actually that's a very, very simple option. You go to diplomacy, you go to the influence actions, you scroll down and you see here an area called offer indulgences. And everyone who, who wants to take it will give you three months of their income and they will receive one stability and one prestige. And only I, what I have to offer is 50 papal influence. That's why it's really important to farm papal influence and of course reform desires um, is increasing because we are selling fake indulgences Zack, 40 money done and their stability goes up and they got some prestige good for them good for me sell indulgences every time when you have the opportunity troops and you have stability help the Livonian orders to get rid of their bishopric stuff so now we have to fight against Dorprot 10 people let's kill them and let's make our Livoni order stronger. And because of that, there are only two more missing. 
One thing I like to highlight is you additionally can purchase a Livonian bishopric. Don't do it. It somehow not costs 100. It costs an insane amount of money, like 1,000 ducats or something like that. I have played around with it. Don't do it. Always try to kill them. One step is cheaper than this 1,000 money. When the Renaissance spawns and you have a cardinal in place, normally he spreads the religion because some guys around it who would like to have it. In my case, and it could be in your case too, that the Pope does not want to spread or the Pope is becoming immediately uh, the, the, the Pope again, so nobody is spreading, spreading it. So develop it. It does not hurt you so much. So just develop up the Renaissance or it will take too much time until it hits your place. So in my case, I will just dev it up a little bit until I have it. And actually developing is super cheap as you can see because there is this lovely buff. Get it up to 30 and afterwards you can make it spread. In my case I just decided to dev up Krieger until 36 because I wanted to really to have the night songs in my city. So as soon as I have it I will now pursue the plutocratic ID group and I will get ready for the war against the Teutons. The next thing what you need to keep an eye for or look out for is this develop your city. You need to have a workshop and barracks in your in your capital. We already have the marketplace and the church. Because we are swimming in money, it will be very easy. When you get this kind of event, cardinal and minister, yes. You can take the prestige, it's very lovely. But sometimes it's more worse to take the papal influence because we need papal influence to sell indulgences. And every time when this button is available, I, I hit it. Right now, we are getting 12 papal influence a, a year. And I have not even hit the first idea. So get whatever you can. One more thing. As soon as you became a blessed plutocracy, you are able to declare war against any kind of heathen inside of Europe. This is huge. You can even declare against Theodoro, who is very far to bottom, or Kirkasia, or Imeriti. It doesn't matter, as long as you are not following your religion. So, even Granada as long as the capital inside of Europe would be an option. You want to fight against Karabakh, who is here uh, very far to, at the bottom? You can do that and vassalize them. When you get the third government reform, take education of the Kurd. At wiser cost, minus 15%. Every time when you uh, have too much mana, uh, admin point mana, Expand the infrastructure because everything gets cheaper in, in Riga in your capital. You can do that multiple times. So never forget to hit that button. By the way, thanks to slow renaissance, renaissance spawning, you even can get, get for setting. The next thing you should focus on is getting your stability up to three because develop your city, stability at least three, and have this mentioned building gives you an insane amount of buff. In my game, I was really unlucky. I had a comet flying and another thing because, you know, you force a sandbox game. Everything, every time something different happens. So, as soon as I have three stability, I will hit that button and will show you what happens. Roughly in the 1470s, you will have the three stability. It could be even earlier in your game if you are not uh, pursued by so bad events. By the way, this is not my war, what you see. I'm just helping out Lübeck to get more favorites. So now we can basically you, we can do this kind of mission. We get more base tax, base production. We get an insane amount of buff, 60 tax income, lots of equilibrium growth, and province governing cost. So you say, what, why should I do that? Right now we have a force limit of 14. We can only have 22 ships, and I have an income of lou lousy 9.73. I'm hitting, I hit that button. We wait for the monthly tick. 
and now we have an income of 24. We have a force limit of 37, so it's tripled. And additionally, we have a ship limit of 48, so this one doubled. So out of nowhere, the city of Riga is now the biggest and strongest city in the world. Nobody has more development than us. There is no city in the world who has more development than us. Even Paris is only a 26, Vienna a 19, London a 20, Constantinople, city of the world, 37. Are you kidding me? It's Riga, 47. And I told you, we can get more. If we end the Confederacy, we get additionally 10 in, uh, ten stuff in our in our ten development in our city, and it, that's really crazy. And we will do that now. Let's finish the war. Afterwards, we subjugate the uh, the Teutons, and we become the huge biggest city in the world with the strongest vessels in the world. I'm eliminating just the last Bishopric here for the Livonian orders, and because of that, I can now hit that magic button, the liberty desire from subjects. And 10 more development, so we had 47, now we are at 57. And never forget to additionally increase your trade power inside of the Baltic trade node. And every time you can hit that button, hit that too, we really will strongly go. So next step is 25 years are almost over, let's attack the Teutons. As you can see, 1473, now it's time to subjugate the Teutons. We have raised our army until 24 here on the one stack and additionally we have hired 13 mercenaries here on the other side. We will use our boats to block the Baltic Sea. Additionally we will continue building boats. Right now the Danish Armada is bigger than ours. Now we are ready with our new force limit, our strong fleet we're ready to subjugate the Teutons. Um, sadly, I cannot call in the others, but Bohemia must do. So we have Mecklenburg and Stettin against us, and additionally we have Denmark. Denmark, I think, is the biggest trouble for us. But let's see how it goes, because Denmark, after the Teutons, will be our next clay. Maybe we can piece them out, hopefully. Let's go for it. A huge uh, work stack. And we just go in and crush some. During my war, I realized that the Moscovian actually already attacking um, Lithuania, and Poland, of course, is uh, defending them. What we will do is during our war is always set province of interest. You can do that, of course, way earlier. These kind of provinces we need for the next for the next mission after the Teutons. So mark them as interest. Oh no. Mecklenburg or Stettin who were fighting Volgas released Rügen. Next to Gotland, now we have two pirate republics inside of the Baltic Sea. Guys, this is really, really horrible. So let's try to crush them as soon as you can because these guys will make you poor. 1477, guys, my navy was able to beat the Danish Armada. Uh, good for us, bad for them. The now for now we will piece them out. Don't forget, they will be our next target because Zealand has a lovely, lovely monument. And additionally, we will put claims on Schleswig, on Holstein, and additionally on Dithmarschen with the transfer subject um, age ability. So let's look out for that one as a next goal. For now, let's just piece them out they have some peace time in front of them and we will subjugate the Teutons. Done! With the Teutons subjugated we can complete the mission. We get more army tradition and military power. Right now we have already 29 military tradition. With that one we get even more. So, and we will make them our historical friends. So this is very, very good for us to keep them in check. So now we have 54 tradition 
and this is really really good and additionally we can take our next national ideas to build up a stronger military and army but now let's have a let's look out for Lithuania maybe they will be our next goal every time when you have money don't forget to put the guilds back in charge and build up buildings especially especially in your in your in your vessel because with this kind of buildings they will become stronger luckily the Moscovian only took what they could get but not they did not took the provinces we are interested in so what we will do is now we will attack the Polish right after after the Moscovians and try to get uh, our, our hold on these kind of provinces. We call in the Bohemians, they can help. For our second idea group, as I mentioned, we will be rely a lot on vassals. We will take influence. If you are swimming more in admin points than in dip points, an alternative would be economic. Economic or influence, one of them you take next. Estates, one addition. As soon as you always have 20, get the papal emissary. It gives you more papal influence. Regardless how often you play it, even I forget things. May don't make it your mistake that you forget things too. In the peace deal with the Polish, to give everything what belongs to Lithuania, give it to the Livonian order. Additionally, take one province from the Warsaw area, the Matsovia area. We will release another vassal, Mazovia, and have them soon as uh, make them join ranks in our fighting force. The next thing is what we will do is we crawl down here to Kharkov to get this monument. This will be our next war. Additionally, we use the Casus Belli to reconquest this kind of area. But for now, we were successful with the tactics of the order mission. We have already 59 military tradition, army tradition. We get one. Now we get permanently plus two tactics of the order and for the fully maintained forts and they will be super loyal and they do not keep any kind of relation slots anymore including that one we can always release the strong duchies and these guys do not even know how this lawyer is written what we additionally will do is we make these kind of vassals your marches. They provide more manpower and they will be stronger. We always can enable trade. We don't need the money from them. What, they, what we need is their manpower and their punch. And as I mentioned, we release Mazovia as the next vassal. They can stay a vassal. We don't really want them as a march for now because they are way too weak. One of our goals in this guide is additionally to get Gotland. Gotland, in my case, is allied with Muscovy and as part of the trade league with Lübeck. So this um, makes it a little bit miserable and hard for us because we have to fight all the kind of, of miners. What we will do is, we will use our magic castle's belly and we will try to fi fight the Muscovies. They have way more force limit than ours, but they are behind in tech. Felling the last indulgences gives us more papal influence and clergy loyalty equilibrium. With that one, we can normally very fast do two missions, dominate commerce and break the hunter. To break the Hansa, we need to have 75 relations with all kind of members of the Hansa. I have built up relations with the Hansa and as you can see, currently my trade league only has yeah, a few members, six, seven. With that button, all these kind of guys from Lübeck will join our trade league and we get more diplomatic 
uh, power and relations. And actually, I think we are now the biggest trade league in the world, right? We have all of them here in the south. We have Hamburg, we have Bremen, Gotland and Rügen. Isn't it crazy? And we have a crazy trade income of 27. Now we can hit this button with global trade power plus 25%. And nobody will now be more powerful than us with trade. With that one, we can easily in even increase our more, we do more sales. More trade, more trade, more trade. Dominating trade allows us afterwards to finance great powers. We will not do that now, but for now let's have Goatland into our claims um, because that will give us even more trade power inside of the Baltics. For tier 4, we will take lands of the church because we get even more courier power, but with that one now we have 16 papal influence a year. As promised, let's attack Moscovy and let's see how it plays out if you fight for Goatland. Let's have a great war against Moscovy. And because it is so great, we will use war against heresy. Aggressive expansion only 75%. What we try to get is, we try to get Goatland and additionally we try to get this kind of area and maybe even we snatch one of their vassals like Psikovk. Uh, because we want to have more vassals to increase our strength. Sadly, nobody of our allies will yet like to join, but maybe I'll call them in later. No, we will be on our own. Second age ability. Don't forget to take transfer subject, because we need to put war claims on Denmark. And if we are fast enough, we could even snatch away Norway. Yes, even Regen troops can stack wipe. Yay! So finally, after some time, I'm not done with the war here against the Moscovies. Um, I only had one goal to take Gotland, and I think I was successful with that. Let's uh, get the province. Separate piece. Oh, yeah, some aggressive expansion against Staten. Who cares? Um, don't forget to continue building the spy network on Denmark. And now let's see what we can get from the Moscovies. Does Sikov wants to be a vessel of us? Yes. Then we take Sikov, we task, uh, 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 get some money, make some poor. We anyhow I'll take some soon again. So because we have more provinces now, as you can see, this kind of buff deactivated. So if we wait one month now, look, we will be above force limit. See, 25. Uh, we lost our we lost our magic buff of Riga. So what we will do is immediately release um, Polotsk as our vassal, and our buff should be back again. Yes, and here it is back again. Now force limit is back to 47 as it should be. Amazing. Next thing is we claim Sierland now, or oh, we can't. Oh, let's claim Lund first, and let's claim Sierland afterwards, and let's get claims on this kind of area. Don't forget, if you have the money, don't forget always to build up this, this kind of ports to the maximum level. As mentioned, next time start again attacking the poles. For now, let's go for the reconquest castles belly against Plock. Um, let's go on the Bohemians. Uh, my war with the Poles is done. What I am doing is, I am giving back all the territory that Matsovia was earning before from Poland, so basically all the territory, it's, it's very low aggressive expansion. What I additionally do is, I will take Viborg. Uh, Viborg has a core on Finland, so Finland has a core on it. So what we will do is, we will release Finland afterwards as another vassal, and our next war with Sweden, we can feed back more and more of the territory of, of Finland. So let's take all the money, let's do it. Yay, Matsovia is now very happy. Let's go for our next war against Denmark this time. Sadly, in my war, I was not able to get Sierland because the enemy 
had just way more navy than me. I already took that Martian. What we additionally will do is we will take um, the Holstein area and uh, enjoy another another one who's fighting for freedom and the religious belief of Riga. And that moment when the Protestant Reformation hits, you are basically on a decision point. Do you want to stay Catholic and earn all the kind of lovely papal influence to boost up your mercantilism every month? Or do you want to use the best and craziest card of spell in the game? It's up to you. If you join the Protestant League, your government type will change and you will lose one merchant. But you will gain and a tremendous crazy good castle spelly against everyone and you can raid churches all the time and with raid churches you can pay up your monuments like crazy. For the showcase of this game I will just show you what happens. We will switch our religion to Protestant. We get some money, yay. And we become from a blessed plutocracy, we become a salfific plutocracy. Ah, oh, these words are lovely, right? And we can use Raid Church. We still cannot use the Divine ID group. We still can use uh, Plutocratic. And we still can put trade posts in any kind of regions. That's not our true home trade port. Additionally, we get minus 10 person government cost. Riga has minus 10. Now we have minus 20. With economic, it's minus 30. With Pluto currency, it's minus 35, and with the government reform, and I will show you later, it's 40 per government cost reduction. You have only five provinces. Don't forget, there's additionally the Protestant buff at minus 5%, so it's 45% without taking consideration trade centers. Let's become religion as a business, scientific plutocracy. We become immediately the defender of faith. We transform our lovely areas and we get immediately, of course, a center of reformation. But because we are the strongest trade power inside of the Baltic, we can propagate religion. That's normally only for the Muslim nation and Dharmic nations, but as a scientific plutocracy, you can propagate religion and as soon as you conquer more trade areas, you can always do that. For well, now, let's see. It's, um, it's um, now a Protestant uh, center of information. The good thing is now, we can use our castle's belly against all kinds of heathen. That one looks very good. They only have one ally. As a civic plutocracy, you have a similar castle's belly like with a Catholic, with a war against heathen. I can do a war against heresy now. Let's call in Bohemia that it goes faster. And you will see what I can do with Utrecht and Stetten. It's pretty amazing. I love it. Let's declare war for now. All right. This was a really quick crawl just as a showcase. Look at the money. We are now at 1,689. And what I will do now is I first start with Utrecht. I force religion on them. I raid heretic churches. Of course, I get all the money as war reps. One, six, eight, nine, two, nine, zero, three. So what happened? And additionally, I converted them. So as I already showcased in the beginning, I think this is the strongest castle spell I have seen. On top of that, for the rate heretic churches, I every time get one hour church power. This kind of po point, I will stop doing the guide because you have seen what this amazing castle spell can do. I walked you through what you could could do, how you could could expand into. I will just give you some more ideas where to expand and how you can go forward. To the east, there's Moscovy, right? You can expand farther in here. Polotsk has more territory to claim, right? More more provinces. There is Tver here that you can release and make a vassal. So basically there are more provinces and more vassals you could release. 
you could feed a little bit more to the Livonian order and of course to the to the Teutonic order. The Teutonic order can here at least claim more provinces. That would be really nice. For Matsovia, I would suggest that you go down this route and you need the Krakow monument because inside there are two merchants and global trade power. That's exactly that what you need. Gotland, we already spoke about it. Sweden, you expand into the north and for Denmark, you expand only into Zeeland and Holstein, you give everything about Jutland. If you're really crazy, what you additionally could do is there are still Scotland around. They are maybe allied with France, but who cares? War against superiority, right? Sadly, you can't become the HRE Emperor. And as Protestant, sadly, you have to wait until the big war kicks in to become an elector. If you are able to do it until the 1511, how it is for me to basically weatherize an elector, spend 6,000 money or a trust and favors with the Emperor, you can immediately become an elector and you become a kingdom. Idea-wise, we start with plutocracy for more merchant power and goods produced and development cost reduction. A second idea, you could take influence or economic. What fits you better? The important stuff here is the policy. 100% force limit contribution and liberty desire and subjects. Third idea, you take economic. Again, you have vassal force limit contribution and income from vassals. The vassals that you do not make marches, they will pay you taxes and you can pay down their liberty desire. You def up your most important marches like Teutonic Order and Livonian Order. You make them your army. Additionally, I would recommend you to go for expansion. Government reforms, as I mentioned, we start of course, in the beginning as a clerical state. Later, you change to a um, salvific plutocracy or blood plutocracy. As a tier two, you start in the beginning mission on high seas. As the moment when you have beaten Denmark, you change to the commercial mission. Tier three, education of the Kurd advisor cursed. The other things are not versus. Tier four, because you need the papal influence you take the papal protege in the beginning or the head of the of the church later you change to head of the reformed church if you have the feeling that um, you don't need that you can always maintain maintain the balance of power tier five take more merchant power tier six there's nothing good inside if you want to become if you want to stay the Sabinic plutocracy what i really recommend you go for part partial secularization and tier 7. Here is actually a really nice one. This is Lokeon Proviso. More goods produced at more death cost reduction. Really important. Divine cause, there is this more of army stuff and the shock damage and afterwards it really doesn't matter anymore because you are a top tier and you, you will rule the world with your vassals. One more time. Summary, how that it goes. You start with the orders. You expand into Poland, you expand into Moscovy, if you can, expand into Sweden, expand into Denmark. Claim the three monuments that I pointed out, Gotland, Krakow and Jelland. That's it. Afterwards, you will dominate the world. Get the ideas, as I mentioned, start with plutocracy, go afterwards to influence and then take economic and expansion and government reforms very important start with the high thief afterwards advisor costs and put all the kind of diplomats into your trade league that in the end you have a huge trade league that everyone is basically giving you trade power in europe and with all the kind of tip rep you it's even easier to expand it i did not do it so much in the sky because i was already swimming in money that's it guys we are done with the guide um, i showed you the most and best Carlos Belly for Europe inside 1034 Lines of the Norse. And if you liked the guide and you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. And if you liked Riga, maybe you pay attention to the Livonia. Livonia. I, made, I made a guide for that one too. They both mingle up perfectly well. So have a great day. Thank you for watching.